everyone welcome to this update video i really hope you're doing great and we're going to be taking a look at the weather update for the caribbean region and we'll also be taking a look at a new prediction out for the upcoming hurricane season so this prediction is from the colorado state university they give their annual predictions for the hurricane season and this one in particular is the most active initial forecast they have ever set out so we'll be taking a look at that in this video why they're expecting what they're expecting so yeah let's kick start things with the caribbean though and we can see here that there are some thunderstorms developing just offshore panama in the south caribbean and some cloud clusters around here and there but for the most part there isn't a major system in the region right now but there is some dust moving in so if you're in trinidad and tobago this morning and even other parts of the windward islands and parts of northeast uh, south america you may definitely notice the haze and more islands are going to be covered by that dust we'll look at the forecast momentarily but as it relates to rainfall activity for today there's a frontal system which extends into the Caribbean and out into the Atlantic. So that may bring some additional showers to parts of the Bahamas, parts of the Northern Bahamas, and uh, even sections of Cuba going towards Central America, the Bay Islands, Honduras, maybe even parts of Belize, Guatemala as well. There could be some showers will turn around here and there, but some areas may remain dry. Then uh, for the southern Bahamas, Turks and Caicos Islands, much is not expected today. It should be dry for the most part, same story, Cayman Islands. But then for parts of Jamaica, there could be some downpours, not guaranteed for the entirety of the island. But there could be some downpours here and there. Uh, also for Hispaniola, some spots in Puerto Rico. And through the Lesser Antilles down to Trinidad and Tobago. Not guaranteed that every island will experience at least a brief shower today. But it is possible that some areas will. And then for the Virgin Islands and ABC Islands, much not expected. Northern South America, much of Colombia, Southern Venezuela, and the Guyanas in some areas will likely be uh, active, receiving some substantial rain. And as we saw, there is some activity within the vicinity of Panama. So down there is a little bit active as well. Wind forecast. So the southeastern Caribbean will be quite windy today, especially as we head into this evening. Some of those wind gusts could be up to 30 miles per hour for the ABC Islands, well over 20 miles per hour, probably up to 25 miles per hour for areas such as Trinidad, maybe even Grenada as well. But things will be a little bit more on the tranquil side for the northern islands, parts of Cuba, the Cayman Islands, Jamaica, Hispaniola, Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, and even the Bahamas and towards uh, parts of Central America. So maximum winds could be up to around 10, 15 uh, miles per hour as we head through today. Finally, uh, in terms of weather activity for the short term, we're looking at the Saharan earlier forecast. So this morning, the dust is going to continue making its way in. So as I said, northern South America, northeast South America. So that would include the Guyanas uh, and go into our the Caribbean islands, Trinidad, Tobago, Grenada, uh, the Grenadine, St. Vincent, Barbados will likely be experiencing that coverage and it will quickly uh, spread to other islands as well, St. Lucia, Martinique, and then eventually the ABC Islands as we head into tomorrow morning. But heading to next week, this plume of dust will continue across the region, maybe even reaching Jamaica and uh, the Western Caribbean as we head into Sunday. And we see uh, much of Northern South America being blanketed by some of that dust and some of it still uh, loitering around parts of the Lesser Antilles. So that is the dust forecast. So as I said, you may notice the haze and it may actually trigger allergies or respiratory conditions so uh, please exercise the necessary precautions guys and uh, especially when there's a lot of dust out there it would be good to remain indoors as much as you can and it's very hot without a doubt sometimes so it's good to be hydrated throughout the day as well it's always good to be hydrated now let's head on to the hurricane season forecast from the colorado state university so on average, there are 14 named storms, of which seven become hurricanes, and three of that seven manage to become major hurricanes, which means they achieve Category 3 status or higher. Now, last year, there were 20 storms, seven hurricanes, and three major hurricanes, and it was an El Nino season. It was very active because of how warm sea surface temperatures were. So that basically kind of canceled out the effects of El Nino in that they're typically less 
uh, storms than average during an El Nino season, but we didn't see that happen last year. However, we still have those above average sea surface temperatures in the Atlantic, as well as La Nina is going to be setting in as the hurricane season commences, and especially through the peak of the hurricane season. Now, Colorado State University, this is their most active initial forecast, as I highlighted earlier in the video. They're expecting 23 named storms, of which 11 could acquire hurricane status and five major hurricanes. This is the list of names for the hurricane season, and this, is, uh, this only consists of 21 names. So every year, the list contains 21 names names but they're predicting 23 storms so where would what would uh, name the other two storms basically well then we would have to go on to the supplemental list the nhc national hurricane center would go on to the supplemental list and these are the names and it came into being in uh 2021 i believe after the retirement of the greek alphabet so the first name on that list is adria next is Braylon. so should there be 23 named storms, then this list would be used for the first time this year. But that is an if scenario because there are many different factors affecting what happens during the hurricane season. Yes, the temperatures are well above average. Yes, La Nina is expected, which would essentially lessen the wind shear, allowing a more conducive environment for tropical cyclone development. But there are other factors such as the Saharan air layer, the Bermuda high, is it dominant? Because if it is, then land areas are more at risk in that case. And it seems as though we could see a more dominant high this hurricane season. And then as I mentioned, the sea surface temperatures. We're going back to this graph. You're going to early April. I believe the most recent update was either the 3rd or yesterday on the 4th of April. But early April. We can see that this black bold line, which represents this year, 2024, is higher than all the rest. And note that they go all the way back to 1981. So the orange line is for last year, 2023. Notice that they all go up. That's because we head into summer when there are the warmest temperatures across the North Atlantic. But there is a decent chance that temperatures will remain above average for the hurricane season going into summer. And so uh, that is going to be fuel to the fire, as I said. It's basically that, the above average temperatures and the fact that we're transitioning to La Nina, why Colorado State University is expecting such an active hurricane season, a very active one at that. What does this mean? It means that if you're in the areas typically affected, the Caribbean, Bahamas, U.S. Gulf Coast, East Coast, Central America, you should definitely have those uh, preparations in the back of your mind because the season begins in approximately 57 days. That is not very far from now. The year is going by so quickly and very soon we'll be seeing those tropical waves rolling off and eventual development. However, this does not guarantee that, yes, you're going to see a tropical storm, a hurricane, a major hurricane this year. It simply means that since you're in an area that is at risk of impacts, you should definitely make those preparations, especially seeing that such an active season is expected. And so guys, I'll continue to keep you posted as I always do. That's the focus of my channel. That's the aim of my channel to keep you guys updated and especially in a very timely manner as well. And also that eclipse is coming up on Monday. So of course, I'll continue to cover weather activity. So if you're in parts of the Caribbean, uh, you'll be able to see a partial solar eclipse with the proper viewing equipment. You cannot look at the sun directly. Firstly, that is going to probably damage your eyes. And secondly, uh, you're probably not going to be noticing anything very significant in the Caribbean because not much of the sun is going to be blocked out for most areas that will have the chance of seeing it. But uh, I'll keep you guys posted as usual. So that is it for right now. And I really do hope that you found this update to be quite informative. However, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll respond to you when I get the chance to do so. And remember to always be weatherwise.